Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Think unexpected in the shadows. I like to put, actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we are painting shutters um, on the wall at the inn at Trace Pinos, California. And this inn really does have soul. This guy, this, this building was built in um, 1880 and uh, it's been restored. It's, it's really an incredible place. And um, it definitely has soul. I mean, back in the day when it was first built, this thing was a brothel, and it was, um, it was that way till it was raided by the feds. And um, in the last, I think, 17 years, I can't remember exactly, but Mike Howard has owned the inn, and he's lovingly restored it and turned it into a, a first-class restaurant. It's just amazing. So we're going to paint sh the shutters on the wall. We're going to see how much color we can find in the wall, and uh, we'll give these walls some soul. So I'm going to start off with the shadow. Because if I put the shadow down first, we're going to be able to get all this color in. And you'll be able to see something pop immediately rather than waiting till three quarters of the way through the show. So I'm going to grab some white paint and immediately start mixing some nice neutral grays. And rather than put all the millions of colors that I see in the wall, I'm going to do one coat and then add color over the top. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and cad yellow deep. Let's see what we have here, what kind of a gray we have. And you know, there is no red in, the, uh, in this painting. <laughs> and my crew, they can't believe that I'm even gonna paint something with, <laughs> without red in it. They're like, what, what's up with this, Shannon? I can't believe you're doing that. And uh, but there will be red <laughs> by the time we're through. We'll, we'll find some red in the shadows. So, so I've got this nice little neutral blue going on, but in order to make this a really nice gray, I'm actually going to add some red to it. Now you can add other colors, but I like red better, so that's what we're going to do. Actually, red is, is a complement. It'll gray it down. And it looks pretty red now, but it won't when we're through mixing, hopefully. If not, we'll add some more blue to it. Okay, that's a nice neutral. Is that enough paint? Probably not. Okay, now that's just too boring for me. <laughs> it's a good neutral and it would work, but I'm going to add a little purple just, just to liven it up. I really do see all this color in the shadows when I'm looking at the walls. Okay, that's good. All right, so that's a good base. I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to look at it next to this. Might be just a little too warm, and it might be just a little too dark. So I'm going to add, first I'll add some white. Grab a whole bunch of that from up here. There, that's a lot lighter. And it's just not quite the color I was looking for, so I'm going to add this. Thalo turquoise. I gotta clean my knife first so that I'm not contaminating my straight tube color up here. Okay. That's cooling it down. That's nice. Can't have the shadows fighting with the rest of the building. Okay, that's good. And the fact that you can see some of that turquoise and it's just loosely mixed, that's good. I like that. Because the building 
you look at you look at walls start looking at walls and you'll notice that they're not the same color in every single place that you look there you know for every square inch you look there's going to be a slight variation so in the shadows they're never as dark as you think I'm going to go ahead and just put this just really scrub in this color quickly so we've got some and the nice thing about this since this is a a light positive thing this will start to pop pretty quickly I'm going to just scribble this here and that will kind of emulate the texture of the stucco if you're in California or if you're thinking of coming to California you gotta go to the end I mean oh my god it's just an incredible food okay so there's that side of it we'll do the roof and you know you're probably looking at the reference photo going you know what 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 is she seeing in this wall why would you want to paint that and that's because I want to show you how much color and how much how much variation you can find in an area that looks that looks like there's nothing there and the other thing is is if you watch a show before you know that that I need a lot of space all my paintings have lots of space I don't like real busy things and so this this particular subject is perfect in fact it's it's almost on the busy side with all the all the little slats so we'll, we'll rectify that. Now I'm scribbling this because I, I want some texture here. And the other reason that I'm not doing nice little quiet little strokes is because on the way over here, I heard Bob Seeger on the radio. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's probably not old enough, but if you are, it was Get Out of Denver, baby. And this song is rocking, it's fast, and so it's in my head while I'm painting. So this background is going to be kind of wild. I like the little imperfections, so I'm not worried about staying in any lines. I want to get kind of close. I want a road map, but if I go over, it's okay. You also notice that I changed some of the shadow lines. I went out there to see when the best time of day to take the reference photo would be. In the morning, it's all in shadow. That doesn't work. You have to go pretty late in the afternoon to get this, this shadow. And with the trees and the neighboring buildings, you never, I never really got quite the shadow that I wanted. So that's the cool thing about painting. You make your own reality. That's what I'm doing here. You don't like it, make it the way you want it. Okay. So we've got a little bit of shadow here. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave just a little hole for this. You don't even know what this, this is. It doesn't really matter. You don't know what the, what's making this shadow here. I thought about putting all kinds of trippy things in here, but gotta keep it simple. <laughs> Cause when I get on TV, um, this, I don't know if you guys know, but this is filmed live to tape. So whatever happens, happens. There's no editing. This is just real world painting. And um, unless I keep it simple on the show, I get really distracted. And that doesn't help you guys at all. Okay, so that's shadow. And where else is there some shadow? There's a little bit on this side here. Just a tiny little line. And then right below it. And I'm using the same color everywhere just to get this thing started. We're getting the party started, then we'll start adding some cool stuff. Okay, that's good. And what about down here? There's some more. It's just a slight little tiny shadow. Why did I pick a square canvas? Well, it really lent itself to a square because it's just boring if it was on a rectangle. I tried all kinds of different things with the composition. I don't like boring. You know, the other thing is the shadows, especially down below here on the, 
below the window. It's going to be a little uneven. And if you look at, at stucco, it's got all those ridges and stuff, so it's not going to be a perfectly straight line. Okay, that's good. I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush for a little tinier shadows. Something that's a little more squared off. And something that's a little scruffy. I'm going to add a little more turquoise in here just because I want a different variation. Don't want it all to be the same. All right, so we've got a little shadow right here. It's, at this point, it's pretty methodical. What you didn't see is the two or three hours of prep time to, to figure out what I was going to paint, how I was going to put it on the canvas, and, uh, and then draw it. But that's boring. You guys can do that yourself. <laughs> you, you know how to do that. So this, this, is, this, this is getting to the fun stuff. Be like watching paint dry. All right, so, and okay, and the, the other thing about how did I get this and how did I get it even? I drew it out roughly and then I got a T square and I actually made sure that everything was parallel. Now, when I go to paint it, I'm not going to make it that perfect um, because that perfect would be boring, but I did want everything lined up to start. Again, I needed a good map so that I had a solid foundation to show you how to do it, and then I can break the rules when I start painting. Cause, just because you can. The other thing is some of the, some of the slats are going to have, uh, even though everything looks even and perfect in the reference photo, if you get up close, you look at some of the slats are going to have a little more cracks in it, a um, little variation, so you don't want them all even. So I'm applying different pressure in different places. Pressure. Not using that much paint. You know what, right in the middle, I'm going to make it fatter. So you can tell that's where the middle is. And just, just to add some interest. It's like the rhythm in music. You look at the rhythm of all these lines that are here. Um, the best music have variations within the song. It's not all fast, it's not all slow. They've got portions of the song that are structured so that it starts out one way, has a, a beginning, middle, and end. And because if this was just one thing, it would, again, I, I go out of my way to avoid boring paintings, boring anything. It was not fun, don't want to do it. Okay, we got more. And, and the other thing I'm guarding against is, is I, I was holding my brush the same way, so it was creating the same type of thing in the same place. So I'm turning my brush around so that doesn't happen. It, it's, it, part of this is just being aware of the things that you do and guarding against them and working with them. Okay, let's see what we have here. We've got a little, little bit at the end. Okay, that's good. So right now it's starting to take some shape just in a really crude, crude uh, state. What I'm going to do to get some instant gratification <laughs> is I'm going to start adding the light part of the stucco and I'm going to do again one color and then later in the show we're going to put all kinds of color over the top of it. So I'm going to move this over and start mixing the light. Now because it's in the sunlight I definitely want it to be warm. Probably don't have enough white out here so I'm going to get some more. And you know that um, if you haven't seen the show before, you got a new tube of paint, 
you definitely want to knead it first before you put it out on the canvas. Otherwise, it's like <laughs> it's like uh, mustard or something where you get all oil first and none of the good stuff. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Cad Yellow Deep. I'd like to add the Indian Yellow, but talked about Indian Yellow before. This particular pigment is like Rodney Dangerfield on Caddyshack. It is just way too loud and way out of control. So we'll add a little bit of it later because a little bit of Rodney's fun. But right now, we've got to keep it, tone it down. A little more. All right, that's, that's good. Need a huge brush for this, or a medium, maybe a medium-sized brush. All right, where's the light side of this? This is going to be, that's too light. I'm going to go ahead and just grab some straight cad yellow deep. I'm trying to decide what direction to go with this. Maybe a little pink, because we haven't had any red, and uh, Sammy Hager wouldn't like that. Okay, that's better. Yeah, much better. Very sympathetic with the... Uh, shadow color that's important and I also wanted it to be sympathetic with the shutter colors because you know they're not going to be totally that green gonna have to gonna have to play with that a little bit all right so there's some light over here this is a great simple study for you guys to try it's also one of those deceptively simple, so you might have to play with it a little bit, but it'll be fun to do. All right. Yeah, there's some more red in here. That's better. Warm that puppy up. Could even do a little graffiti on the wall here with my my initials in the brush strokes. Okay, why is this canvas jumping all over the place? Well, normally there's something that you can adjust up here to hold the canvas down, but I don't like to be locked into anything like that. <laughs> I don't like to be that restricted, so um, I'm I'm letting it jump around and be free. I am, to make it easier, going to pick up the canvas and turn it so that we can paint the other side a lot easier. So right now I'll just turn it sideways. You know, turn it whatever way is going to make it comfortable for you. Upside down, backwards, paint in the mirror, whatever it takes. Scribbling down here too because it's going to make some great texture. Still here in Bob Seeger. Camera guys think I ought to be locked up somewhere. <laughs> Actually, they've talked about doing a Saturday Night Live spoof of the show. Instead of Give Your Wall Some Soul, they want to do a show called Give Your Wall Some Holes. <laughs> yeah. So I think maybe come April, April Fool's Day, I think we ought to do that. I think it'd be great. All right, I'm going to turn it again. funny thing about that is I got banned from babysitting <laughs> because of holes in wall. We had these neighbors and they had 
uh, a, a room with no furniture in it, and I was babysitting. And I thought, well, I'll just teach, <laughs> I'll just teach the kids to play, you know, do somersaults and stuff like that. And I was barefoot, but uh, my heel and my foot went through the wall. So I called my dad, and I'm crying, and <laughs> they come over, and neighbors come home, and of course they're they're not too happy with me. <laughs> and they told all the other neighbors that. Uh, she makes holes in walls. So I, <laughs> that was it. Didn't babysit after that. And um, I think that that spoof, that Saturday Night Live, would be perfect. We ought to do a show like that. Okay, this is good. This is happy. So we're starting to get something going on here uh, with, this sh with these shutters. <clears throat> now, the green on the shutters, there's two ways of looking at this. If I was painting this for somebody else um, as a commission, I would paint it pretty much exactly you know, what they wanted. But this is for me, so I'm going to add and make this a lot more turquoise than it really looks there. So I'm going to move some of this over. Get some thalo turquoise. Now it's this could be Rodney's cousin, because <laughs> i got to tell you, you use a little bit of this, and <laughs> it totally takes over. So, um, did you see how much I, I'm, I'm going to do that again, because if you see how much I put on my knife, and what it does to a pile of white, we'll have to, we'll have to squirt out some more white, just so you can see that. Okay. Alright, so I'm just going to take Oops, that's even too much. Okay, just a little bit. I hardly have any on my knife at all. I'm going to hold it against the palette so you can see. There's just hardly anything there. And I stick it in this, and before you know it, it had taken over. Now, is that just a little bit too blue? Yeah. I'm going to tone that down with a little bit of quinacridone rose. And I should have cleaned my knife before I put it in there, but no! <laughs> I totally contaminated that. All right, now why did I pick the rose? Because that's a neutral, so that'll calm it down so that it's not, not like the... Uh, oh, they have these really colorful buildings in Capitola, California where, that, uh, that would actually be that pink and that, that turquoise. But uh, in the part, where, part of California where I live, we got toned down a little bit. It just wouldn't fit. Okay. Do I like that? Not quite. Uh, maybe I'll add some purple. Okay. This is good for the shadow side of the shutters, of the green part with the color. And we'll make a nice lighter one after that. Oh, that's a nice color. I don't know if I if I really want that there though. <laughs> I put it down and like I'm not so sure I want to do that. I think I will go a little more green. So time to get out, Rodney. Wait a minute. I got some paint on my brush, and before you know that, it's gonna end up all over my face. So I gotta wipe it off. All right, a little bit of a little bit of Rodney goes in here. What, what's the technical term for this? This is actually Indian yellow. We're going to green this up a little bit. That's better. It really grayed it. And you know what? I don't even think that's enough. I'm going to be bolder with it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is, there's one, you know, there are times when I'm trying to decide whether I should start telling the story or not, and I can, and I can hear the director in the back going, mm, don't go there, Shannon. So, um, so I'm trying to decide whether to behave or not. Okay, I will for a minute now. 
We'll see how long I can do that. All right, so this is a good, is this a good subtle? Yeah, that's much better. It was just way over the top blue, and I was just not in the mood. Especially since there's no red. Oh, you know, that, that, blue, that amount of blue is okay if there's some red to offset it, but... Uh oh see? This is what I mean. <laughs> I gotta get this off now before it's on everything and everybody. All right, that's pretty good. We did a really cool painting in, uh, there's a leadership class for our county and they had an art day. And so we did some individual projects and I was trying to think what would be good to do for a whole group, you know, a painting for a whole group. So we put the canvas down on the ground, filled water balloons with paint, and um, we started chucking the balloons at the canvas. Only problem was I, I didn't I stretched them out, but they, they weren't breaking. That was so so we got rocks and broken glass and whatever we could find because we were in this park and put that down on the canvas and that was great because then they exploded and um, and it was really cool. It had some really cool effects. And then after the whole thing was done, they took some paint and just really in the glass and just really made a really cool abstract out of it. Those guys made an awesome painting. It was so much fun to watch them do this. So you don't have to do something that's representational. Just go out there and have fun. Get into the paint. Okay, I want to see how far this goes. Goes down, the shadow goes to about right here. What, about halfway? Not quite that far. And how far on this side is it? Is it kind of even? I'm looking at my little reference photo. It's sort of kind of. It's interesting that, that the way the light hits, it actually goes further down here than it does on this. Shadows aren't always logical. They are if you think about it. <laughs> but uh, I guess, well, my sister always said I had Shannon logic, so it's a little bit different. All right, so you notice this isn't even. I don't care. It's close. Doesn't have to be perfect to work. That's that's the big message here. It doesn't have to be perfect to work. Um, you don't have to be perfect to start painting. Just do it. When you get closed shutters like this, it always makes me wonder what's behind them, what's going on. So this definitely has some mystery into the painting. All right, so that's that's in the shadow, and then then most of this is in light, and so I'm going to make a lighter color for this area here, and we'll we'll whip that out. Ah, need some more white. Boy, we're really going through that today. I'm going to move this over so we have room. If you watch a show before, you know this is different, very different palette than I normally use. The fact that I haven't pulled any red down is pretty scary. Okay, I'm going to take some of this add white to it, but if I just add white to it, it's going to be boring and, um, and also not what I want. So I'll put white in it, but I'm going to need to warm it up a bit. Let me see how, how that does. How's that looking? Do I like that color? No. So I'm going to add a little, oops, got to wipe my knife off before I go grab another color. And add a little bit of uh, Rodney. You know what? I'm going to have to talk and get, 
talk to the, see if I can't license. <laughs> That'd be a great name for a tube paint, huh? You know, when I do license my paint, we're going to have Sock Monkey Red. That'll be good. All right, this is just, <laughs> okay, this is tick green. <laughs> that's what that reminds me of, and that, that's not going to be acceptable. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to this, make it happier, and a little bit of straight turquoise. And I'm checking before I ever put it on the, the, pal on the canvas to make sure that it, oh man, I've got paint everywhere today. Um, make sure that it's, that these guys are sympathetic here because it's not going to get any better when you move it over to the canvas. They have to be happy neighbors. Okay, that's good. That's warmer. All right. We'll get a lot of liquid and put that down. Getting a clean brush, so I don't want to contaminate the color. I'm looking for just the right brush. This is good. Why did I pick it? Because it has short bristles, so that's going to give me a little more control. Oh man! See, I got a little bit of got a little bit of paint that I dripped right here on the wall. That's just going to add a little interest. And since my hands are dirty anyway, you know, just kind of smush it off there. That's good. Yeah, that works. Okay. That is not light enough. I put it down and it looked light enough on the uh, on the palette, but wow, it's not. So, how can I fix that? I can take this brush that already has, I think that's what I'll do. I'll put it down and then add white to it. it's lighter than I thought. I'm grabbing some of the neighboring light as I picking up some of that and I'm gonna brush mix that. That's good. All right, so now I have to take a look at the reference photo and see, okay, what's going on here? The sides are lighter here. And yeah, I'm going over the hinges a little bit, but you know what, we can clean those up later. I think this brush might be a little too big for the area, but you always want to pick the one that's almost as big as you can get without being too uncomfortable. And this is actually, you know, when you think about it, everything I paint is so much larger than life. This is really scaled down because this shutter is huge. So this is, this is quite a bit smaller than actual size. So it's weird to be painting something that's much smaller than life. That's a good start on that. All right, let's see what we can do with the rest of this. This needs to be in shadow right here. I don't want quite the same color that I have here. I'm going to lighten that up and warm it up a bit. So, and I'll, I'll need a smaller brush to get into that area. And some more white. Wow. I'm going to use old tube on this canvas. We're going to have to get the red out of here pretty quick because I'm going through withdrawal. <laughs> it's hard to paint without any red. And this is a much, you know, everything I do is a warm, warm palette. So this is way cooler than what I normally do. 
No pun intended. All right, so I'm going to make this a lighter shadow. There we go. So we're getting the base done. Once we get the base done, then we can start having fun with putting all the different colors in. And um, that's when the stories come out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somewhere, it sounds like there's somebody with a balloon that's just letting it out a little bit. And uh, <laughs> it's either a really big mosquito or uh, somebody's back there with a balloon. There are days when I just pretend like this stuff isn't happening, but today is not one of them. <laughs> it's just going on. We had a contest recently with members of my crew to find out who knew the words to Super Chicken. And uh, I know them. <laughs> and that's how the whole thing started. Now, Super Chicken wasn't my favorite cartoon. I have to admit, I like Fractured Fairy Tales the best. But as far as uh, a silly song, that, that was a good one. And uh, Larry had it down, boy. Larry, Larry. <laughs> Larry had just about all the words to Super Chicken, and of course, um, in order to win, they had to perform. And so some, one of these days, we're going to have to get this on camera. All right, so there's the shadow for that. Now let's start putting in some color. For, oh, yeah, we've got to have the shadows for the handles. And this is probably the tiniest brush you've ever seen me use. And if it comes to having to get my reading glasses out, I don't paint that tiny very often. Okay, so here's the shadow of the handle. Now, I could, I was tempted to just go ahead and put that in. But there's only one problem. It's tiny. And it would make me tired. So it's easier to put the white over the top of that and... Um, and go into it later. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears. So you can change your mind in time. All right, got to, got to get some more white out here and make this light. This is more of a peachy color. So I think we actually get to use some red here. The inn has a really nice outdoor patio. You can, you too can go there and <laughs> have a meal and check out all the, uh, the color on the wall. If you're ever in California, Northern California, go to Trace Pinos, check it out. All right. That's got to have some red. It's just all there is to it. That's better. Running out of room here. I forgot to put one of those shadows in, but I'll put it in later. <coughs> so I'm not painting around this stuff. I'm going right over the top of it because that would require patience that I don't have. So if you're a real patient person, go for it. But I, I have devised ways to do things that don't require me to be too patient. So I have maybe four or five paintings going on at the same time. And that way, you're always in love with one of them. Um, I'm working on a portrait right now that, that God, I get up at 5 in the morning, start painting on it. 9 o'clock, I'm like, ooh, i got to gotta take a break. And, and I've been doing that for days. It's just been, you know, that just happens. So if you've always got more than one going, chances are your productivity is going to be up. And you're always going to be in the mood for one of them. Because some days you don't want to look at them. Oh, yeah, there's red. We're happy. 
That's just, the whole thing's feeling better now. Now I could uh, put in all this color or I can just put in these shadows really quick. So I'm going to do that while I'm here. I'll put in the shadows and I'll uh, put in the little handles. All right, so the shadow. Now if you, want, if you have a little tiny area you want to get, and you've never seen me do this before because I don't do anything this tiny, you put your finger down here to brace yourself. Or you can use a mall stick, but you know. Um, I don't do anything like that so very often. So here's the shadow. So that braces your hand so that you can actually paint, keep it steady. And depending on how much iced tea I've had is how steady it gets. Okay. Well, that's good. And then just go ahead and put the handles in. I'm going to make those purple because it's a nice dark value and because I like it. And it won't read purple when you stand away from it. Whoops, that was crooked, but we'll tidy it up later. I have to see what that handle does. I'm taking a look at my little picture. And we're just going to get this blocked in so you get an idea of how to do this. OK, that's, that's good enough for a start. Because you know what, otherwise I would futz with that. See, what, what's happening is, even though I've barely put a few things down, it's starting to read. You're starting to get that space, starting, you know, starting to get the feeling of what's going on here. All right, so I need to block in the rest of the color before I start playing with things. And uh, I'm going to put this down right now. See, the red's coming out. It's toward the end of the evening. The red starts coming out because I can't help it. Believe it or not, I don't have red all over my house. Just in the studio. Well, except for the paintings. Everything else I have is neutral. The neutral allows the brights to sing. And none of these things would work unless you had some nice little neutral backdrops. Okay, so went to dinner at the end, had these, this is reminding me of the salmon raviolis. Why? Not just because they had red. <laughs> they were phenomenal. Oh, my God. Could eat, eat those every day. That was one of their specials. Or, or the chicken genovese. Oh, my God. That's good, too. It's one of those places where you could go by yourself and, and it's like, it's very comfortable. So I'm scrubbing all the pencil lines away. Like, when are we getting to the fun stuff? We're getting there. See, there's variation because one, I loosely mix the color. Two, I get distracted when I'm on TV and I don't pay attention. And so it's, it is starting to add some interest. You are starting to get some different color here.
I did try to use some uh, music therapy is great while you're painting. In the, my first session in the morning, I usually don't listen to music, but later in the day I do. But I tried. I was really tired the other day, so I thought, let's let's get some really rowdy music and see what I can do. Well, I was working on this portrait. <laughs> I thought, uh oh, this might be this might not be good. Um, but instead, the energy really came out in the face, and, it, and it's awesome. And this looks like, um, right now, it's looking like 80s colors. I'm going to have to do something about that. Got to get it covered. So it's, you know, get things covered first before I start tweaking with them. thought about painting these open so symbolically to, to open the shutters and I thought nah I really wanted to play with the colors on the wall almost there now for the hinges on the side I'm going to do just some very minimal strokes to give you the idea of that that's what's going on but we're not we're not going to paint every little uh, nut and bolt when you're that far away you first of all you can't see them and secondly it doesn't interest me to do that there's details and there's details and i choose to pick what's going to what's going to be important All right, so I need to throw some shadows in. And uh, it's starting to, starting to work. It's a good base. All right, so let's throw some more shadows in down here. Some violet. Takes a long time to get a canvas covered. Woo, that's a, that's a blue if I ever saw one. We need more of a purple. Wasn't very neutral, was it? Well, I'd gone the whole show being neutral. <laughs> Can't do it that much longer. Okay. All right, that's going to make that pop a little better. Something a little darker here. That'd help if I had some paint on my brush. I'm starting to get some straight tube color and put it down. Now, this could happen depending on your personality. It depends on how far into the painting process you have when you start getting looser. It's almost like warming up. All right, so that's starting to pop. So now that we've got a little little thing here, a little that, these are totally different colors, but they're working. And I'm going to add a little bit of dark right under the this line here, within the shadow. And I'm breaking it up a little, because it's not going to be just a straight line. I don't want it to be too perfect. And I'm softening the lower edge, but not the upper edge. So I'm blending this lower edge, but leaving the, the upper edge hard. It's a good time for contrast. OK, so I'm going to quick uh, make some hardware. That's going to be another violet. 
A nice little contrast here. And uh, let's just look at some darks and lights here and see what's going on. I think if I if I stylize it, it'll work. I'm, I'm thinking about how much time we have left in the show and what I want to spend my time on. And I do want to spend a lot of time on the rest of the wall, so I'm just going to rough these in. For people who are interested in how the painting actually comes out when it's done, you can always go to my website. That's www.shannongrissom.com, and you'll see how I finish the painting. And actually, you know, if, uh, if you do get to California and you're in Northern California, the inn is just an incredible place to check out. And uh, so the website there is tracepinosin.com. And if you miss that, at the end of the show, the, ref the sites will be in the credits. All right, so I did some rough little outline there for the, they're totally, they don't even line up. And now I'll uh, just put these in. Just some scribbles so that you kind of get an idea of that's what's going on here. Very rough. Because again, I want to play with the wall. And what I'll do when I get back um, is tidy these up. But right now, I want to start showing you some of the color and what we would do to, to make this really cool. All right, so we need some more shadows in certain places. I'm going to add some red right in here because it's just been too long. And here's a subtle way of putting red without it being in your face. It can be done, you know. Oops. A little more red here, just because. And it's uneven on purpose, again, to add interest. This is actually a quinacridone violet. So that's how I can get away with putting some red down and not having it be too much. This needs a little break here, a little bit here. All right. So we've got a basic structure down. You're starting to get the, the idea of what it, what it could be. Now, good, I just noticed, I just noticed uh, my hair must have caught some of this, so there's some extra brush work <laughs> it's probably in the paint here. Um, all right, let's, let's put some more color down just because it, it needs to be bright. It needs to be lively. It needs to have some soul. And... Um, I got soul, Ian got soul, and now we've got to give it to this painting. So let's throw some, yeah, let's, let's get out Rodney. Okay, so we've got some, got to be careful though, because he takes over. All right, so what do we want to be brighter? Do we want the, uh, the shutters to have more? Nah, let's throw it in the wall. And I'm going to scribble here and there and everywhere. And just, I'm seriously, scribbling because there's all this texture in this wall. It's great. And you can't just put Rodney everywhere. You've got to add some other, other golfers. So um, Let's see. We've got we to gotta find Bill Murray. So Bill would be red. Um, let's, let's get some. Bill is definitely red, definitely. OK. That adds a little more interest there. And I'm all over this canvas because that's just what we, that's just what happens in this stage. All right, so we need some more variation here in the quiet tones. Oh no, we need to put what was that guy? He was oh god, he was a newscaster on a show like Ted something. He was a pain in the butt. We need to put his color down too. So he would be he's kind of a blowhard color. So that would be a red without a punch. It's a, it's a wannabe red. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where are we going to give him? Well, he needs to be a little bit under here. Not too much, though, because he wasn't as fun. 
he was annoying, so you only want a little bit here and there. There. That's enough of him. What we can do, though, is put him in the shadows where he won't hurt anybody. So I'm going to grab some of this violet. Stick that up there. And I'm going to grab some pink. You know, hey, you don't, uh, you know, I'm not Miss Pink Girl. Uh, I think I said that in the opening. But every once in a while, you got to throw some pink and make some interesting things happen. <laughs> okay. Somebody out there has a great laugh. All right, so that's, that's starting to look happy. Now let's throw some, what other color can we just throw in? Oh, we got to do something to these poor shutters. Holy cow. Grab some white. We got to really warm these up. But this time it'll be with the Cad Yellow Deep. I can't put Rodney in the shutters. And we're going to warm. And I'm, uh, I'm consistent, thinking about the rhythm. Can't, can't do the same thing all over the place. This is definitely syncopated. Kind of like a gypsy folk song. OK. Getting down to the wire here. Not much time left in the show. What else can we do to punch these things up? Well, let's throw some straight turquoise right over the top here. I like that. A little there, a little there. Tendency is to try to put it everywhere. I can't do that. I got to mix it with a little blue. Throw in a little hair. Gives it a little more texture. Okay, we're we're running out of time here. Making the director nervous. So I just want to thank you for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. This inn definitely has soul. And uh, take a look at the website. See how the painting comes out. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Shannon Grissom.